It is the start of a new school year. Almost unbelievably. It seems every year summer starts and it seems like we have this long break before school and it flies by and I'm always ready. I'm always excited to get back to school. But it always sneaks up on me a little bit too. So here we are. Start of a new school year, which means the return of our social emotional learning curriculum, what we call family time. Family time is a name that came from my students as we talk about the family in our classroom. And this is a chance for us to discuss social emotional topics. And we're all the way up to family time 109. That was another student suggestion, the first year that we really did a formal SEL curriculum, I numbered the weeks and my plan was we'll just start over again the next year and number them. And a student suggested you should just keep, keep number them. Just keep going. We'll revisit some of the same topics year after year. We'll re-hit the, the same social emotional learning competencies in different ways but we'll continue the numbers and just see how many of these we, we do over the years. And it's kind of great to think about that we've already had 108 weeks of conversations. It's not even just 108 separate social emotional learning conversations. We have multiple conversations throughout the week. We we set a topic and a, a focus for each week. And then we start each of my classes talking about these. And it's great to think about all the, the conversations that we've had, all the topics we've covered. I've learned so much about my students and just, it's made me a better teacher in many different ways. So I always look forward to our conversations as we start the school year, we have our social emotional learning competencies. These are competencies that are set by CASEL, which is an organization that focuses on social emotional learning. And they've been adopted. These competencies have been adopted or competencies similar to these have been adopted by many states. Iowa has adopted these specifically. So, we go through the CASEL standards because they've been adopted in Iowa. These are things that we, we now have to address in some way, which is great. When we started doing some of this stuff, it was not a requirement to address it. And we, we didn't have the formal competencies that we were trying to miss, was trying to, to hit. We were just kind of mixing things here and there. And it's great that this is a focus in our state. I've had the good fortune to connect with people from other states and even other countries talking about their social emotional learning. And what's tragic to me is that there are places where they're trying to fight having social emotional learning in the classroom. It's sort of unbelievable to me. I, I've talked to places where doing some research and talking to people who are working in, in the social emotional learning field and people trying to pass state legislation to remove social emotional learning from school, which to me shows a tremendous lack of understanding a tragic lack of understanding about what our young people need and what all people need. The truth is we're not very effective educators if we're only addressing the math and science and reading, all those things that get so much focus and all those things that are important. 
but we can't be effective if that's all we're addressing. The truth is, in every one of our classrooms, every one of them, we have people who are dealing with trauma, we have people who are dealing with mental health issues. We know that we have a, a mental health pandemic, epidemic, whatever it is. We have a, a, a mental health issue. And it's impacting our young people. And we have students in every classroom who don't have a lot of supports at home, who are dealing with trauma, who have faced a lot of things that they shouldn't have to face. And they're in our classrooms. And we're asking them to learn content, which is important. But I always look at it this way. If we had a student in our classroom who was physically ill, who was sick, who was throwing up, who had the flu, we would not expect that student in that moment to sit down and do algebra problems. But that's exactly what we do with mental health and social emotional well-being. Because we can't see it. We can sometimes see indicators of it, but it's not physically there. The student doesn't walk into our room and we say, ah, you're having a, a rough time, that you're, you're feeling depressed, you're feeling anxious. We don't always see that. We don't see the things that happen outside of our building. Sometimes we find out about it, and it's usually when things get bad. So, we don't expect somebody with a physical illness to be working on the content in our classroom, but we do that with mental illnesses, mental health issues, emotional issues all the time. We wouldn't, if we were coaching a sport and an athlete had a, a broken leg, we wouldn't expect that athlete to go out and run. But again, that's something we can see. We have to address the social emotional issues if we expect our, our students to learn and to grow and to be the people we know they can be, the people they want to be. And we also know that emotional intelligence is connected to success in all fields, in all endeavors. The ability to identify and manage our emotions is highly connected to success in all areas, in all fields. And for my money, that makes emotional intelligence the most important form of intelligence. There are all sorts of different types of intelligences. And emotional intelligence is key anything we're going to do in life. There's my little soapbox speech about social emotional learning, why we do what we do, and now we'll get into it. So we start off, our social emotional learning competencies are self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, relationship skills, and responsible decision making. Those are the castle learning competencies that are adopted. And then the castle and the state of Iowa have then identified different areas that fall under those five categories. But that's what, what we hit. We cycle back through those five main headings and we address the different topics throughout. And we always start with self-awareness. We don't know ourselves, it's pretty hard to know anything else about this confusing, messy, chaotic life. 
So we're talking about self-awareness, and specifically, we're looking at accurate self-perception, we're identifying personal qualities and interests, and we're looking at self-confidence, self-confidence and self-efficacy, where we're trying to create strategies focusing on positive affirmations for ourselves, and we're going to examine conditions that influence our self-sense of identity. So, for Family Time 109, this is, who are you? We're going to spend, usually spend a couple weeks at the beginning of the year looking at self-awareness and self-management specifically and kind of setting a tone for the school year. One of the great things about the school year is that there's kind of a beginning and an end and there's checkpoints along the way where it's kind of built in where we can check our own progress and we can reset some things and kind of wipe the slate clean a little bit. So for this year, we're going to spend a couple weeks at the beginning of the year, and we're actually going to create a visual in my classes to kind of help us understand who we are and who we want to be. And I say who because often in school, in our careers, we focus on what we are. What do you want to do with your life? What do you do for a living? More important question is, who are you? At your core, what are your interests? What are your values? Who do you want to be? Yourself, but what version of yourself is going to be the version that's going to make you feel at peace and feel happy and feel proud of the person you are. So that's what we want to focus on. And we're going to create this visual, gives us something to actually picture to look at, and it's going to help direct and individualize our social emotional learning throughout the year. First, we want to establish that positive self. So I'm going to have my students list just first some of your interests. That seems like such a simple thing to do. It's crazy how students can struggle with it. I primarily teach visual arts, and I give my students a lot of freedom to select their subject matter and the media with which they're working. And we try to individualize things as much as possible. So we've got a bunch of different things going on. And students will struggle. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Okay, well, what are you interested in? And students will say, I don't know. It's like, well, you, you do, do know. You do something when you go home. You have some hobby that you do. You watch something on TV. You listen to some music, whatever it is. But sometimes we struggle to identify that. What are you into? What are you interested in? Maybe it's something you don't know much about, but ah, this kind of got my interest a little bit, got my wheels turning. We want to explore that. So all my students looking at that first, that's, that can be kind of surface level to start. It's kind of our way in. What do you like? What do you, whatever it is, books, movies, music. When I said, what do you like? I think of a football coach that I had in college, Coach, <laughs> coach Tatum. Coach Tatum was from Texas, and he had a, a thick Texas accent. And no offense to anyone who has a Texas accent. And I'm going to sort of do my impression of Coach Tatum. But I remember one time I was up in the coach's office. I was doing some film work up there, and Coach Tatum came in. And he had that Texas draw, and he goes, Luke, what you like? I was like, what? I, I didn't understand what that meant, what you like. I don't know, what? He's like, what you like? What, what, I, what I like? I'm like, what, you mean like, how am I doing? He's like, yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm good, I'm good. So I think of that, like, that always comes to my mind. It's like, well, what do you like? What are you interested in? What you like? So uh, this is how we're starting. What do you like? What's stuff that you're interested in? Uh 
then I want you to identify some things that, that you bring to the table. Some personal qualities, some skills, some attributes that you have. This is another thing that's really hard for some students to identify. For them to take a, an honest assessment and say, I'm good at these things. And that's tough for some students for a number of reasons. One, there are far too many students who don't get a lot of positive affirmation at home or outside of school. They don't have people telling them, I'm proud of you, I love you, I care about you, you did a great job with this. A lot of students are walking to our classrooms without that. So it's important that we do some of that in our classroom. And it's important, if we're going to build self-confidence, if we're going to build self-efficacy, we have to give our students permission, first of all, permission to identify strengths, to identify those things they are good at. We have to give them that permission, and we have to provide them with opportunities to discover those strengths. Opportunities to have success. So I want to have my students spend some time to think about, really, honestly, what, what are you good at? What do you offer to other people? What do you offer to the world? And you all have something. Absolutely, inequivocally, you have something to offer. Something to offer other people. I firmly believe that our interests, our passions, our sense of purpose, those things were given to us. We have those things for the express purpose of bringing them to life, putting them into the world. letting other people connect with them. So we want to spend some time thinking about that, talking about that. And this is time to, the other thing that students don't want to talk about this sometimes because they, which this is good, want to be humble. They don't want to brag. That's a great thing. It's a great thing to, to not want to pound your chest and, and be cocky, something like that. But it's important that we, at least for ourselves, have a, a positive self-image. And that doesn't mean we don't think we have room to grow, we don't have areas to work on. It's just to understand that, yeah, I've got something here. I've got something to offer. It's a big part of finding peace in this life, is feeling like we have something to contribute. And the last thing, in our first week, I'm going to have the students do, is create some sort of positive affirmation. This might seem a little, a little hokey, a little cheesy, but I do think it's good to have a, a positive affirmation, to have a, a saying, a little slogan, a little motto that we can fall back on when things get difficult, because they do. They will. It's good to have a, a little reminder of what's important to us. I try to do that all the time. We'll talk about, I have little slogans and little sayings, things that I've come up with, things that I've taken from other places that I'll repeat to myself, to kind of snap myself back into it. I do it a lot visually too. It's part of the reason I have, I have tattoos and pictures and things, and tattoos all over my body and pictures all over the walls and stuff. A lot of it's reminders of what I think is important, of what helps me recenter myself, find my center of gravity, my, my focal point, and get back on track with things. So I want you to create a positive affirmation. Not necessarily create, but, but establish a positive affirmation. It could be something that you come up with, or it could be 
something you took from a movie or a song, a lyric, anything like that, but something that you're like, this hits home with me, and I can repeat this to myself to kind of get me out of those dark times and thinking positively a little bit again. That's where we're starting with our social emotional learning for this year. I'm excited to be back in the classroom. I love it. I'll say it again and again. I'm one of the few people in the world, the far too few people, who gets to wake up every day, do what I love doing. That's being a dad first and foremost, teaching and coaching right behind that. Love what I get to do every day because of the students, because of the people with whom I get to teach and coach. Excited for this school year. Much love.